Jeff Chandler for the events calendar, and today we're going to look into how to create tickets in the WordPress Classic Editor. We'll briefly show what creating tickets looks like in the Black Editor at the end of this video. Creating tickets with Event Tickets and Event Tickets Plus is fast and easy. This video walks you through the process of making tickets for your site's post, pages, or events. Before getting started, make sure you review your settings. This video is divided up into two main parts. Setting up basic tickets, which is creating basic tickets with a specific or unlimited capacity, and shared capacity, creating two or more tickets that pull from a shared capacity for the event. Tickets can be added to post, pages, or events. In the classic editor, you will find the tickets meta box below the main content of the post type. In this example, we have the events post type, and this is an event I've already created in the ticket meta box displays below. When clicking on the new ticket button, you will be presented with some additional options, as you can see right here. In this example, we are using Event Tickets Plus with WooCommerce. Since we want to make a purchasable ticket, we click on the new ticket button, which we've already done. If you want to collect attendee RSVPs without selling tickets, you can click the new RSVP button instead, in which case you'll want to read our RSVP tutorial located on the event calendar knowledge page. If you are using event tickets only with Tickets Commerce, then you will only see one capacity option. Many of the fields in the Tickets meta box are self-explanatory, but let's run through each just to be sure. First, we have the type, which lets you set a unique name for the ticket type, which might be something like standard, adult, concession, or etc. Then we have price. Price controls the price of each ticket. If the tickets are not going to be sold, but rather you are going to give them away for free, you can leave this field blank or set it to zero. Note that leaving the price blank only works when using WooCommerce at this time. When using Tickets Commerce, the price field is required. Then we have capacity. This is the number of tickets that are available. If you leave this blank, it is assumed that there is no limit and customers can buy as many as they would like. If you have a limited number of spots for your event, you'll want to make sure to set this accordingly. Then we have some advanced ticket fields. First, we have Ticket Description, which is optional, but it's a good space to add any information customers might be interested in, such as bring a waterproof jacket or not recommended for children. You could choose to show or not in the front end ticket form. We also have Start Sale, which dictates when the tickets are available for sale. If you're making tickets on a post or page, this field is required. If you are making tickets for an event, you don't need to set this field. By default, sales will start when you publish the event or ticket. Then we have end sale, which does the reverse. You can set this to a date after which the tickets should no longer be available for customers to buy. As with the start sale field, setting this is optional for events, and the default is to stop sales when the event itself starts. Then we have SKU. This lets you set a unique code to help identify the tickets. This is another optional field and is of most use to merchants with an existing stock keeping unit system. By default, the name and content information of the person buying the tickets is collected during the purchase process. If you want to collect additional information, such as names of all attendees, t-shirt sizes, etc., then you can implement the Attendee Information feature, which is available only with Tickets Plus, by clicking on the Attendee Information. This feature is explored in an article on the Events Calendar Knowledge Base, and this walkthrough assumes that you do not need to collect additional information. However, here on the demo site, I am using Tickets Plus, and as you can see, we have the attendee information edition here, and this is where you can create a field set where you can collect additional attendee information. I've filled out the information for my ticket, and now I'm going to click on the Save Ticket, and this will add it to the Tickets Mata Box, as you can see here. And if you end up making a mistake, you can always click on the pencil icon to edit these tickets. And you can also duplicate these tickets if you want, or just simply delete them by clicking on the trash icon. A quick note about the ticket form. If the tickets are for sale, but just sold out, then the form will still show. But purchasing tickets won't be possible, and there will be an out-of-stock message, as you can see in the following screenshot. Down here below tickets, you see a message, out-of-stock. But what if the tickets are not sold out, but are only going to be sold between certain dates, and a website visitor views the event page outside of that time window. Well, in this case, the ticket form will not show up at all, and simple tickets are not yet available type message will be displayed instead. As you can see in this screenshot, down here at the bottom, we see tickets are not yet available. 
The shared capacity feature allows you to create multiple tickets that all come out of one pool of stock. For example, say you have a venue that has 100 seats and you are selling three different price tickets for children, adults, and seniors. If you listed the capacity of each ticket at 100, you might accidentally sell over 100 total tickets and run out of seats. Instead, you can set a shared capacity of 100 for the event. Your attendees can choose to buy any of the three ticket types, but only up to 100 individual ticket sales. To enable the shared capacity for your event, click the Settings button in the Tickets meta box. A field will appear for shared capacity, or you can simply click on the pencil to edit the amount for the shared capacity. And in this example, we're going to make it 100. Click on Save Settings. Then if we go back to settings, we'll see that we have a shared capacity between these tickets for 100. If you check the Show Attendees List and Event Page checkbox in the Classic Editor, attendees who purchase tickets will have their Gravatar displayed in a Who's Attending feature on the Event Page. And you can find that right here within the Ticket Settings. There's a checkbox here where you can show a list of attendees filtered by those who opt out during purchase. If you display attendees on the front of your site, attendees can participate in the public attendees list. We are excluding users from the public attendees list if the attendees are not displayed on the front of your site. If you are displaying attendees, we default the option for users to be excluded, opted out by default, while we work on creating an opt-in method rather than the current opt-out only method. Note, we recommend running only one e-commerce functionality at a time. If you need to run multiple, we highly recommend that all tickets for one event use the same e-commerce platform, which you can select from the Ticket Editor settings. Next up, we recommend that you learn about managing ticket orders and attendees, as well as reviewing how event tickets are calculated. Links to these articles will be in the video description below. Event Tickets Plus has a built-in anchor link so that you can link users directly to the ticket sales form on a single event page. However, please note that this is only true for tickets being used on the event post type. Tickets on post, pages, and other post types will not have this anchor link at this time. For information on what the default anchor link is and how to access it, please refer to the knowledge base article entitled Creating Tickets, which will be linked to in the video description below. Up until now, we've seen how to edit, add, and manage tickets in the WordPress Classic Editor. Here's a brief look at how you can add and manage tickets in the Block Editor. As you can see on the screen, I have an event in the WordPress block editor. What I'm going to do is add a tickets block underneath this paragraph block. As you can see, the ticket shows up. I'm going to click the add tickets button. I'm going to give this ticket type a name of event demo. I'm going to leave the price as free. You can add a description if you want. Here you have options to share capacity with other tickets. You can set capacity for this ticket only or mark it as unlimited. You can set the sale duration of the tickets. You can also select and get access to the ticket SKU, collect attendee information if need be. And then once you click the create a ticket button, things will be saved. And once you click update, you'll be able to go back and you can add attendee information if you'd like. So as you can see, whether you use the classic editor or the black editor, the choice is completely up to you. We support both. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to connect with the team via our help desk. Good luck.